Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Ruth Marquise, your favorite real estate agent. All right, today we are gonna talk about the three things you need to know before buying a home in the suburbs. Um, I'm in Bucks County right now, and um, I was just thinking about a lot of um, people say they want to move out in the suburbs, they wanna get a single home. Good morning, good morning. And um, I just want you to, if that's you, if you're thinking like, look, my kids need a better school and I don't like the system, you know, the, the school system where I am or all that, um, and you're considering moving to the suburbs, here are three things I want you to consider. Um, number one, I want you to consider the taxes, okay? Um, in our city, city taxes are, are lower than, you know, out in the county. So let's just say you found a beautiful house. The most important number that you see after the price is how much are the taxes? Because if the taxes are like $7,000, do the math, divide $7,000 by 12. That's going to be an added $583 to your mortgage payment every single month. Let's just say your, your mortgage payment was gonna be $700. Add that, add homeowner's insurance. Now you're in $1,200, $1,300, $1,400 just to live in the suburbs, okay? And, you know, it's just depending on how nice of a house, because you know if you're going to do it, you got to go all the way, right? You know, whatever you can afford, you're just going to max everything out. But then just remember you're going to be living there, and they're, sometimes they're not, it's not the newest home, but you're still paying, you know, for them. And then when your lovely children grow up, and then it's just you, you know, and the boo in the house, like you still gotta pay all those taxes. And most of it is because of school taxes. Uh, so that's, those are the higher taxes. So um, yeah, so that's one. Consider the taxes, because they definitely affect your mortgage payment every single month. All right, if you're gonna move to the suburbs, number two is consider the distance. All right, I know you feel like you're gonna move away from your family. I can't wait to get away and all of that. But you know, every time, you know, and the family event or holiday comes around, or if you like to shop at your favorite spots, you're gonna wanna stay in the same spot. So you might find yourself, I don't care where you live, if, you, if, you're, if you're in a certain area, you like to do business in a certain area, you work in a certain area, you have to consider the drive from your new house to your church, your new house to your job, your new house to your family's house. You have to consider the time. If it's like 50 minutes all the way, you're gonna be a little frustrated. So just consider that. Try to stay close just in case. You know, you just never know. You know, you might care about your family, you know, <laughs> later on down the line. All right, and then um, number three, you will have a bigger down payment. I know all the time I always preach like, listen, if you have $5,000, you can get started. You know, you don't always close with 5,000. Sometimes you need six, sometimes you need seven. But for sure, if you move into the suburbs, you're gonna need about 8,000 or more dollars, but it's not as much more as you might think. If it's still your first time, you are still a first time home owner, so you can qualify for FHA and you can get it with a 580 credit score. Hey, if you wanna get in the suburbs, just be willing to pay, make the payment. Make the huge payment and that's fine. Because if you're gonna be paying for private school, if you're gonna be paying for that anyway, you might as well go come on down to the supper. <laughs> but yeah, like if you're like me, I do care, you know, what schools my kids go to. And I did go to the county and I had a lot of benefits of going there. But if you can't, just find a nicer area in the city to move to. And I, for personally, I think that the high school matters the most. So if you can get your starter home now so that you can put yourself in a position that by the time your children, like if you start with, zip, you know, the baby's just born, you know, 12, 13 years from now and you have owned your home for all this time, now you have built up some equity and when you want to go buy a house, now you can come into the equation with $20,000 because you've been paying on the home all this time. So that's the best thing to do. Definitely not rent. <laughs> That's for sure. But if you have to, temporarily you will. But as soon as you're renting, you know, just go ahead and um, start saving, start the process of buying a home. Because sometimes you have to move a certain date. But if you want to move, I let people know it takes 30 to 40 days if you're ready now. 30 to 40 days. And if you're about to put $3,000 on a house or uh, to rent or uh, apartments and rent, why not just put $5,000 on a house that you own? So that all you gotta do is get through these little hurdles and you can own your own property. If you have any questions, please call or text me at 
259-4639. Let me get you a plan. Let me get you started. You may not qualify today, but a year from now, you'll know exactly you know what you need to do, how you need to do it today. And I will see you on the next video. This is Ruth, your favorite realtor. Let all your friends and family know about me. Thank you. And leave me some comments. If there's some more tips that I forgot, leave me some comments. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good day and see you tomorrow.